Welcome back to MMA Odds Breaker this week. We have Ryan Couture getting ready to fight Dakota Cochran coming up here on uh, Bell Tour 135. That, of course, the main event is uh, Joe Warren and Marco Scalvo the, the, um, for another title fight. Ryan, it's been a while since you and I have talked. Uh, how has it been? And I'm not talking about training. I'm talking about your marriage. You just got married. <laughs> uh, married life is great so far. We've, uh, we've been having a blast and uh, just actually ended up going on our honeymoon smack dab in the middle of my training camp. So yeah, that's, that made, was... uh, that's made preparation interesting. Um, but I'm feeling good and, and uh, loving married life. That was my second question, actually. Is like I knew that the honeymoon was planned long before they gave you the event. Yep. And now that you have the event, you're like, hey, my honeymoon is already booked. We paid these tickets. I can't cancel. Was it hard finding workouts in between bottles of wine in, in Rome and in Paris? Uh, I just really didn't even try. I did a little bit of okay. real – light uh calisthenics in the hotel room when i when i was feeling up to it but we walked around so much and and i was at least sort of in the back of my mind thinking twice about what i ate so i didn't put on too much weight um and i knew i still had five solid weeks when we got back to to really hit it hard and so it's just been imperative that i hit every workout since we got back and and i'm right on track and feeling good how did did you actually feel a little bit more other than jet lag i mean obviously because you're gone for so long your time table got screwed up a little bit how did you feel coming back? Did you feel a little bit more rested, or did you feel a little bit behind the first couple of days of practice? Um, I felt refreshed and excited about training. Like about halfway through the trip, I, I started getting soaked to come back and really get after it and, and sharpen up. I think, honestly, uh, I was starting to feel a little bit bored of the gym and, and kind of tired of grinding uh, right before we left. I had been hoping to get on that January card, and when that didn't pan out, I felt like I was kind of like one foot into training camp for, for a long time, so... Like the breath, the the break kind of got my mind right, um, but my body was definitely feeling the uh, the two weeks off when I jumped back in. Uh, so I was sore in a way that I haven't been in a lot of years that first week back, but but everything straightened out after that, uh, and, and I'm feeling good. How much time from when you got back th from the honeymoon until fight day? Like, what's the, how much was that time frame? It was uh, just shy of five weeks. And before that, take minus that two weeks, you were in camp essentially for three months it's like one foot in training camp like you said for almost three months right yeah so i was hitting a lot of sparring practices and, and uh you know getting a lot of two days in not not every day but but probably three quarters full speed training camp on and off for for three months and and you know, so i was feeling a little run down a little over it but so actually the honeymoon came at the right time then you need the break and it wasn't like you come back you have a week and then you fight i mean you came back you had a five yeah. weeks so which is a lot of guys to be honest with you they're only doing five-week training camps because they're kind of like you. They're gym rats. They're always in the gym. They're always working out. They don't need to do a 12-week training camp because they're already in honing on their skills. They just need five weeks to get themselves right and correct. Yeah, they're just keep that conditioning out, really. Right, right. So now there's been there's been a lot of changes at Extreme Couture. I mean, a, a human, one of them is Gray Maynard's back, and it's changed the face yes. of kind of – with Randy Couture retiring, it kind of changed. Everybody kind of fled because his – his ability to be in there every day wasn't his focus anymore. Now yeah. everyone's back because they realize we changed the manager with Eric Nitzik, changed uh, the head the head coach with Robert Follis and Dennis Davis. We've changed, or I say we, like I'm there every day and, and <laughs> I'm not, but it's still my home whenever I'm in Vegas. But still, it's 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 like everyone's kind of come back and 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 you can feel the energy because you've been there the entire time. Do you yeah. feel the difference now in in sparring and when you weren't in train camp, kind of going? I'm going to kind of skip today because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of animals in there I really don't want to get hit in the head by. I'm going to skip sparring this week because I don't have a fight sign. I'm not signed to do anything specific. Do you, ha do you have that feeling now when you go into sparring practice sometimes? Um, I really now I think more than ever feel sort of accountable and, and like I owe it to my teammates to, to be there and practice even when I don't have a fight. Even if I'm taking it a little lighter, I'm not going hard and, and getting all the sparring rounds in. Um, I, I feel guilty if I miss days because we've always got guys coming up and, and it's just – um, Eric and Dennis and Robert have done such a great job of fostering this this team atmosphere and really getting everybody on board and, and making a big unit out of all of these fighters that are fighting all over the place and you know just kind of kicking that every man for himself attitude to the curb. We we all are really trying to show up and be present and, and be good teammates and and I think it's shown in the success that the gyms had over the last year and a half. Um, we've been steamrolling guys because we're all looking out for each other and everybody's chipping in to make sure we're prepared. You know, I saw uh, Robert over at uh, um, Born and Raised um, at uh, uh, Born and Raised Bar here a little bit ago, and the one thing that we talked about um, that 
we really hadn't really understood before is that a guy like me that comes in and I'm automatic, I'm like, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm I don't need to get hit in the head. I don't want to be there getting beat up every day. He's like, you don't have to come and do five rounds. Come yeah. in the rest of practice and do round one and round three and coach. Like, I go, I go. Okay, what happens if I'm, I'm a fighter? I'm a, I'm a professional, but I'm not in training camp, and I don't want to do five yeah. rounds. And he's like, then you do round two and four and yeah. five. Like you just, you don't have to do every single live sparring round if it's not where you are in camp. And that for me is one of the biggest changes that there's not the pressure to go in there when you're mm -hmm. when you're not in camp to do the live sparring rounds if it's not part of your day, if it's not part of your camp. You don't need to yeah. be in there. So you can be in there for the technical and the live drilling and all that, and then it's time to go hard. You can skip out. Does that save a lot of guys and make a lot of guys want to come back more often because they're not having to get beat up when they're not in camp all the time? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's just a much more welcoming atmosphere. It's a much more positive vibe. Uh, one example I really like is, is Jay Haran. When he's in town, he's in there almost every day, every sparring session, and he'll do all five rounds. But you go around with Jay and you know it's going to be real light contact and really just working technique and yeah. It's a chance to get your heart rate up, keep sweating, and get a good workout and, and try out some new things technically that you might not be able to otherwise if you were swinging heavy. Um, and so he gets his work in. He stays sharp and stays in shape, and, and we get a, a little different look and get to take advantage of that wealth of experience that he has to offer. All right, let's change gears. Let's talk about uh, Dakota Cochran. I mean, I've commented a couple of his fights. He, uh, I commented the fight when he beat Jamie Varner and beat him easily and soundly. Now, part of it was Jamie wasn't focused correctly, and parts because Dakota had a great training, training camp. What do you see with Dakota coming in besides that he's strong and he's going to be aggressive and he's got that typical Midwestern wrestling style of aggressive behavior trying to always grind you out? What do you see in him that we don't? Um, you know, I, I think you covered a lot of it. He comes out hard. He comes out aggressive. He's going to be dangerous, especially early. Lost you there for a second, Ryan. Yeah, sorry, I had another call come in. Oh, yeah, no worries, no yeah. worries. Um, yeah, he comes out aggressive, he comes out hard, he's going to be explosive, especially early on. I may have to weather a little bit of a storm, but I think uh, I can hang tough and and, uh, and be right there in his face, be right there uh, pressuring back at him, and, and uh, we'll find out who's, uh, who's in better shape and, and who's got the stronger will, and, and I think I can uh, outlast him and, and get him to fade a little bit, and then I'll start to find my openings and, and have... Uh, be able to pour on the offense more as the fight goes on. Well, you look at records. He's eighteen and seven. You're nine and three. Um, he's obviously had a lot more heavy name, bigger name fights. Do you think his experience is gonna is gonna be to your advantage? Because sometimes guys that have experience, they have patterns and habits that you're gonna exploit. Or do you think his experience is gonna be something you have to deal with as you get in the later rounds? Uh, it could be a little bit of both. Um, I think that experience is gonna make him a, a particularly tough out. He's very very durable and. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have to be ready to fight hard for 15 solid minutes and not expect to get an easy finish or expect him to make any mistakes that I'll be able to capitalize on. He's, I've seen him put himself in some pretty bad positions, and, and he finds a way out. He, he finds a way to keep fighting. Um, so in that regard, it's going to work against me. But, yeah, I think some guys, when they get that many fights into their career, start to, you know, get a little complacent about things. or It's, it's just another day at the office. They don't have quite that same fire or that same hunger. So... And it'll be interesting to see where that shakes out or, or how that balances out. You've uh, you've had a, a pretty good corner run as of late. Is there going to be a change in your corner at all? I mean, obviously, Follis is going to be there, but who else is going to be in your corner? Uh, it's just going to be Robert and my dad this time. Okay. Um, Scheduling-wise, I uh, would have liked to have also brought Dennis Davis, but he's got a lot going on. He's got a baby coming soon, so, yeah. so it wasn't a good time for him to be traveling. So um, it'll just be me and my dad and Follis. So it should be, should be a good... Uh, Good group. Both of them are great at uh, getting in my head, getting me in the right mindset, and, and uh, I think I'll show up uh, focused and ready to fight. Are you uh, comfortable fighting in Oklahoma? I mean, obviously your, your dad went to school there. Thackerville's not too far away from Oklahoma State and Stillwater. I mean, is, is it a comfortable place for you, or is it just like any other any other city that you fight in? Um, it's starting to feel like a home away from home almost. This is going to be my fourth fight out there uh, over the last couple of years, so apparently Oklahoma can't get enough of me. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I'm, you know, I'm Pretty comfortable going just about anywhere. It's all just the inside of a hotel room somewhere and, and pretty much the same process everywhere you go. So uh, I, I don't see it really factoring in one way or the other. How comfortable has it been over Bellator since uh, Coker took over? I mean, obviously it's a little bit more comfortable for you with 
our manager Sam being friends with Coker and, and Coker taking over Bellator, it kind of made the transition a little bit easier. But how do you feel with, with that? That how Coker's running things right now from from an athlete standpoint? I feel great. Um, obviously, a lot of familiar faces, and, and yeah. going into this deal, I, I felt very confident and, and very comfortable uh, that I'd be well taken care of and treated well, just because of my history with Scott and the Strike Force days. Um, I always had a, a great experience. I have nothing but positive things to say about that that time in my career, and, and so far this is going just as well. There's uh, obviously some new faces that were pre-existing Bellator people, and they've all been great to work with as well. And you know, I, I think the changes they're making in the format and, and sort of moving away from the weekly shows and the tournament format, I think is going to be really good and is allowing them to put together some phenomenal fight cards. Uh, I'm just excited to be a part of it and, and to see uh, see where it goes. We talked before the interview started that, you know, L.C. Davis got moved up to the co-main event. His fight got moved up to the uh, co-main event spot when they lost uh, the Mike Richmond fight. Uh, is there another fight on this card that you're excited about seeing besides the L.C. Davis fight? Because we're both fans, obviously, of L.C. Yeah, L.C. is a great guy. I'm happy that he gets the opportunity to, to fight on the bigger stage. Uh, I'm always excited to watch Joe Warren fight, too. He's, okay. he's a fireball and, and just such a character and a good dude as well, so... Always fun to see him get in there and and, uh, and get after it. I've uh, talked to Joe several times in interviews. Obviously, we've talked a lot off camera, and, and we hang out quite a bit whenever we can. To me, I've never been in a corner, though. I've never been in a locker room. I've never been around Joe backstage for a fight. To me, it seems like that he would be a, just an absolute mess backstage, <laughs> like perceivably a mess. Like not, not that he's a mess, but like he's just all over the place. He's so animated. He's so antic. He's so fired up from the very beginning. Have you been around him backstage before in a fight? No, I never have. But I could see him being the kind of guy that you'd be almost stressed out, all that energy coming off him. I need a very mellow, calm, relaxed atmosphere back there. Otherwise, I get worked up and, and feel like I'm at risk of coming out flat. So I feel like I'll have to avoid being in the same locker room as him if I can. He seems like one of those guys that would just throw <laughs> off that vibe that would that would wear me out. You answered my last question. I'm going to ask for a different locker room if you have to. So you're going to answer it. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I'm the same way. I'm like, Joe, man, you got to go in a corner. Just go in a corner, stay by yourself, man. You drive me nuts. Just stop. So, I got the yeah. same thing uh, when we were over in Sweden, uh, sharing that locker room with Matt Mitrion was, was yeah. That was tough. He was going and yelling and hyped up from before the first prelim started. I didn't know what to do with myself being in the, in the room with that energy. It's like, man, come on. It's like football players. That's what they do. They get hyped up the moment they wake up for the game that day, and they're, they're hyper all day until the game is done. I mean, guys are different. You know, We're just kind of like, look, we got to spend energy. For that 15 or 25 minutes we're in the cage, other than that, I don't want to spend the energy. I'm going to save it until we, until I have to. Yeah, I don't want to do the work to have a big enough gas tank to be keyed up like that all day. I'd rather, uh, <laughs> I'd rather pace myself out and just pick my spots. <laughs> yep, I agree. I agree. Well, that's Ryan Couture. Thanks so much for coming on, Ryan. I know you're going to get back to the desk of, uh, of uh, handling some of the new intakes for uh, Extreme Couture here in Las Vegas. I appreciate taking the time, buddy, and good luck, man, I, and have fun down there. Thanks, Trig. Always a pleasure, and, and uh, I will. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good, bud.